What's going on everyone? A lot of you guys really liked our backyard builds. Uh, Andy's got his backyard downhill trail and I got my pump track. So today I'm gonna to be running you guys through some of the mistakes I made and things I would do differently and some tips on how you can build your own backyard pump track. First year of the pump track is done. It's been a hell of a journey and I'm stoked I finally built it after years of dreaming. Unfortunately, it only took a global pandemic to actually get it built. The pump track has been a blast to develop. Maintaining it has been a challenge and very time consuming, but getting to shred it with my friends, hunting for new gaps and lines, timing some hot laps, and just enjoying bikes together has made it all worth it to me. I'm so stoked that even Andy was able to stop by and check it out while he was up here in the summer. And I look forward to making it down to Charlotte to check out his backyard trail too. To keep a pump track fast and safe, you do want to keep the track clean. It's very common to see brooms laying around dirt jumps and pump tracks, but I really don't have time for that shit. That's why I use a leaf blower on my track. It generally makes a pretty big dust cloud, but it gets the job done super fast. Once it's relatively dust free, give it a light watering and you're ready to shred. Water is so important. That seems like a total no brainer, but unfortunately I thought I was doing a solid job with watering. Spring was very dry for us in Wisconsin this year, and I felt like I was hosing it down really well. But at the end of the day, nothing beats a solid rain. Because of this, I learned to do all my maintenance right before a rain to ensure it gets proper water and packing. If you live in a really dry area, try watering as you're stacking dirt to ensure that the base is thoroughly saturated. Although we had a dry year, every time it did rain, it was a total monsoon. These were great tests to see how the track would hold up to the elements and how my overall drainage plan was. It is important to design your track so water doesn't pool up, especially between rollers. For my design, I tried to divert all the water to the center or at the base of the corners. This is something I'll be looking to improve a little bit more in the future as the track develops. Also. Luckily for me, the dirt on my property is pretty sandy, so most of the flooding was saturated into the ground within an hour. Packing is another obvious part of pump tracks and dirt jumps, but how exactly do you properly pack? Unfortunately, just shovel packing isn't going to be your best bet on a pump track. I found that it's best to fully saturate the part you're working on and then switch off between flat shovel and hand tamper packing. Then you can even do some slow laps to burn it all in and then rework it again with more dirt and more hand tamping. Make sure you aren't trying to shred on soft dirt. Even if the top seems packed tight, the base may be too soft. I may have learned this the hard way. If you want to get real fancy, you can rent a plate compactor, but for backyard tracks, it won't be completely necessary. Temps were consistently much higher than the past few summers, so the dirt was breaking down quick. For this reason, I decided to test mixing Portland cement in with my dirt to see how it withstood the conditions. As I had hoped, the results were really good, and next year I plan on mixing some more Portland cement around the entire track. This is a really cheap solution if you're building with softer dirts. Just make sure you mix it into the dirt and not just spread it on the top riding surface. So I had mentioned in some of my other videos that this berm wasn't done exactly right and I did end up fixing it. Basically, I didn't draw the arc. I just kind of assumed that what I had was good. 
and it wasn't even close. What I ended up with originally was a very shallow entrance and then it just kind of arced sharp and came out. So now I dug it out a little bit this way and it's, it's a much better arc. It's not perfect, but it is considerably better. So I would highly suggest if you're doing some 180 berms, definitely draw them out. So it took me a long time to realize that this roller is really not where it should be. This roller should probably be more like right here because you almost have to pedal right here. You do, I do pedal right here. And if this roller was right here, I would have room for probably one more in there and I think it would flow a lot better. So that is a high priority for next year. So if you're building a pump track, you definitely wanna add rollers into the corner and out of the corner but you want to watch where you put them because that really helps determine how much speed you're going to carry in and out of the corner i've mentioned this in some previous videos but if you are building a backyard pump track definitely buy the ebook pump track nation there's a ton of good information and i think the ebook only costs like 10 bucks so definitely check that out hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it helps and inspires you to do some digging of your own I know that I look forward to spring when I can get the shovel back in the dirt, and I already have some big plans for some new and exciting features. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me yep. up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay. You get to the top, now you roll it. Gotta keep your hands up. Thank <laughs> you.